The Lord be with you. I am Pastor Sandra Carlson Alexis, and this is our online worship service. It's the third Sunday of the month, and for the summer, we thought we would keep up with our online worship to include more voices. Our theme for today is creation care and also Baptism 101. This begins our four-week series on baptism and communion, the sacraments of the church. We begin our worship with a confession and assurance. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. We confess, dear Lord, as creatures privileged with care and keeping, that we have abused your creation gifts through arrogance, ignorance, and greed. We confess, Lord, that we are often unaware of how deeply we have hurt your good earth and its marvelous gifts. We confess that we are often unaware of how our abuse of creation has also been an abuse of ourselves. For our wrongs, Lord, we ask forgiveness. In the sacraments of baptism and communion, you claim us, forgive us, and redeem us. As baptized children of God, Help us water the earth with care. As we are welcomed at your table, help us nourish all living things. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we become children of God. In Jesus, the manna from heaven, we are fed and nourished. God has shown great mercy. We are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The gathering song for this morning is wade in the water and donna tatro is our cantor so feel free to sing along <laughs> Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Um, at church, we've been waving at each other, but maybe there's someone in your household you can greet with a, a greeting of peace, or just text, or phone, or somehow reach out to somebody, either right now or later on today. And now we have a special litany, since it's a creation care theme, we have a litany for our covenant with creation. For the marvelous grace of your creation, we pour out our thanks to you, our God. We praise you, O Lord, for plants growing in earth and water, for life inhabiting lakes and seas, for life creeping in soils and land, for creatures living in wetlands and waters, for life flying above earth and sea for animals dwelling in woods and fields. How many and wonderful are your works, O God. In wisdom you have made them all. Amen. And now our prayer of the day. Please pray with me. Creating God, you made the universe and all living things. We praise you also for recreating us through baptism. Thank you for giving us new life. Help us to find ways to bring new life to your universe. Amen. The appointed psalm for the day is Psalm 34. We're just going to be reading verses 9 through 14 responsively. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And now we will have the reading uh, read this morning by Frankie and John Deloso. They are going to be reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 42. After the Holy Spirit came to the apostles on Pentecost, Peter preached the gospel to the gathered crowd. He told them that Jesus obediently went to his death according to God's plan, was raised from the dead by God. Those gathered wanted to know what they should do to follow Jesus. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brother, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be, may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you. For your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, the word of the Lord. I've really grown to enjoy documentaries. I get to learn about some issue that a filmmaker thought was so important they devoted a whole movie to it. My octopus teacher taught me a, an appreciation for the octopus, which is a creature I thought was scary before. And it also helped me to see an underwater world that I just don't think I know enough about. Another documentary, Crip Camp, gave me a view of how people with disabilities rallied each other and became advocates who helped pass the Americans with Disability Act. The documentary Blackfish, I think a lot of us are familiar with that one, it changed the way I saw places like SeaWorld and the problematic way they keep killer whales in captivity for their shows. Documentaries can be a very persuasive medium that changes the way people think by helping them to see something they didn't see before. Sometimes people can be persuasive with words alone and paint a verbal picture so clearly it 
changes people. It makes them want to be different. That must have been what happened after the Pentecost winds blew and the people heard in their own languages and Peter spoke in Acts chapter 2. In today's reading, Peter gave a stirring sermon about Jesus, who did deeds of power, wonders, and signs, and even death could not stop him. Wow. The people were changed by what they heard, and they asked, what should we do? Sometimes that happens. You know, we hear somebody speak, or we watch a documentary or a program, we read a report, and we are just so moved to do something. And one of the things I've been hearing a lot about this week is our changing climate. And we've all noticed the extreme weather of late, more heat waves like what we are experiencing here in Maryland, more droughts that lead to fires like the West Coast, California, Greece, and Turkey, more heavy rains and flooding like in China. This past Monday, the United Nations released a climate report written by over 250 scientists around the world. The news wasn't good. The Earth is in code red status. The report says it is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land. Unequivocal. And there's no recovery from some of those climate changes, especially for the oceans, where ice caps have melted and where an acidification of the ocean affects coral and other wildlife, other sea wildlife. The United Nations report said that they predict we will experience more and more extreme events unprecedented in the observational record. We listened to this report, and I hope we are moved and persuaded to think differently and ask some questions, like the question the crowd asked in Peter, Act, to Peter in Acts chapter 2. What should we do? What should we do with the news about the climate? What should we do with the news about Jesus? What should we do with our own lives to show that we get it? In the scriptures, in response to that question, what shall we do, Peter gives a rather succinct answer. Repent and be baptized. You should know the word repent here doesn't mean a guilt trip. The word metanoia means changing the way you think, seeing things differently with new eyes. What are we missing? Have we not paid attention to what God is doing through Jesus? Have we disconnected ourselves from God, each other, and the planet? When we look around at the world, we can see perhaps, yeah. Maybe we have something to repent of. As human beings, we need to recognize that humanity continues to undervalue the action of God in today's world. Humanity, like us, we've also disrupted the Earth's delicate balance. We need to see things differently. We need to repent and understand what God is showing us, and we need to do something about it. So let's renew our minds Let's reclaim the call of the baptized, use the gift of the Holy Spirit, and live into the call to be responsible stewards for all that God has created. What should we do? When it comes to caring for creation, the planet, we should work to improve the situation by, according to the experts, reducing methane emissions and greenhouse gases, and we need to do that now. It's easy to say, eh, so what? If I change something, what, how could that possibly help? But even each and every one of us, no matter how big or small we think we are, we can do something by making smart choices. And a lot of little somethings adds up to a big something. Uh, we could drive less or, or plan to do many things if we do take the car out. Maybe opt to walk or bike or carpool if that's possible. We can try to fly less, make our homes more energy efficient, plant trees, and eating less meat can make a difference too. Raising livestock is one of the causes of greenhouse gases due to methane produced by animals. These are just small things that we can do on our own, and they're just reducing 
not taking away entirely. I think we can make those changes, but we could also ask major manufacturers to do something to care for our planet too. That's our call. We don't need a documentary to show us how important this earth is that God created. And when we care for this planet, it's a way of caring for each other and future generations. There's this interconnectedness of all that God has made. And we see this clearly in the four pillars of the Earth Charter, which our church endorses. So to care for the Earth, we must support, according to the Earth Charter, number one, interdependence of all life. It's diverse societies and generations. Number two, ecological integrity. Number three, social and economic justice. Number four, democracy, nonviolence, and peace. These are all part of the Earth Charter, and I encourage you to look that up. There's information at the end of this worship service about that. And First English is excited to be working on a pilot project with the ELCA regarding the Earth Charter with those four pillars. And we're still trying to figure out what it is we're going to do, but whatever it is, we know we will make a difference. And by making a difference in one aspect, we are going to make difference, differences in other parts of those four pillars. We are taking seriously our baptismal call to be God's hands and God's ears and God's eyes. We know that we are reaching out to a world that needs to be touched and needs to be heard and needs to be seen. God first created the world and then us. And then through baptism, God recreated us through water and the word. And it's so amazing God uses something as basic as water. That's such an important part of the earth to connect us with God's family, to connect us with God's forgiveness, and connect us with Christ and eternal life. Martin Luther said, when God's word and the water come together, that is life-giving water, rich in grace, and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit. With baptism, we are also given a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, to help us live out this call. See, we didn't just get wet for ourselves. We were washed into a relationship with all God made. We should see that. And when we use our baptisms, our lives could be living testimonies to what God does. And perhaps that example could inspire others to see differently, to repent. Like a documentary, our lives could inspire others to appreciate God and creation and perhaps lead them to ask that question, what should we do? What should we do? We can live into our baptisms, connect with the earth, connect with each other, connect with God, and inspire others to do the same. Amen. There are a couple of questions in the bulletin. The first one is, the Holy Spirit is described as a gift. Uh, what is one of the gifts that you've received recently? Did you use it, or is it still in the box? And what about the Holy Spirit? Do we utilize God's gift? And the second question, the apostles asked what they should do to follow God. What are some things you could do to care for God's earth and God's people?
Let us confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as we come to the time for prayers of intercession, I remind you that after each petition you will hear, Lord, in your mercy, your responses hear our prayer. And there will be a time when you can add prayers from your heart. Both in person and online, we who are rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, mend the earth. Cool warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal new approaches to the ecological challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and those who suffer, especially Jack, Kathy, Frankie, Judy, Helen, the Stahl family, Sydney, Matthew, Bill and Dee, David, Carol, Andy, Chris, Doris, Richard, Barbara, Barbara, Chris, and John. And among our friends, we ask you to watch over Keith, Susan, Bill, Chantal, Ron, Laura, William, Walter, the Thomas family, Mary, Marcia, Frank, Danielle, Cheryl, Jennifer, Adelbert, Joan, Christine, Norma, Brad, Ray, Elijah, Jay and family, Paul and Sarah, Cisco, Pope Francis, Yi. And for those who grieve, we ask you to be with the friends and family of Mary Sands, the friends and family of Mary Bishop, the friends and family of Helen Santoni, and the friends and family of Matthew Daw Day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly. Press the, bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, writers, sculptors, and others that enrich our worship and daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for those responding to this pandemic in hospitals and vaccine sites. Be with those who suffer with COVID and those who have lost loved ones to the virus. Be with those suffering in places around the world with outbreaks. Help us to care for each other in our cautious reopening. Watch over those who stand up for equality and justice issues made clearer through this pandemic. Bring hope to those enduring unrest like Myanmar, Belarus, Ethiopia, Israel, Palestine, the Church in the Holy Land, Afghanistan, Haiti, and Cuba, as well as places dealing with drought and fire. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we pray for the city of Baltimore and our online mission field. 
for our leaders, Joe, Larry, and Brandon, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house, for our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, bring us to new life. Give us the living bread from heaven through which we abide in your love. And on the last day, raise us with Mary, mother of Jesus, and all of the saints to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, there are still more prayers. And we ask you with this time of silence to watch over all of these people and issues that we pray now silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this point, we come to the time of offering. So there are a couple of different ways you could give an offering, and those are right here. They're on this video. Um, if you're giving by text, you can enter the dollar amount, and the phone number is written above, 410-593-1853, or you can just go to our website, firstenglishchurch.org. Um, you can also just mail something to our church, uh, 3807 North Charles Street, Baltimore, 21218. So there's a few different ways that you can give, and as we think about ways that we are offering ourselves. We are very grateful this morning to have a different kind of offering. So thank you to Zoe Bassett, who is offering her gift of trumpet. So we will hear her play, sent forth by God's blessing. prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. And now we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And since we are online and not in person, we offer up a special prayer for spiritual communion. Most holy God, during these times when we worship online, let us be the living body and blood of Christ. Bless us through the Holy Spirit to accept and offer forgiveness to our communities so we can share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the Spirit dwelling among us, now and forever. Amen. And now our announcements for mission. Those should be at our Facebook page and our website. We have some of the ways that you can keep up with things or if you're looking for something, some way to give back. Uh, I will leave that to, to be shared later um, in those areas. But I wanted to remind everyone that next week we will be in the sanctuary. We will be uh, using the theme of vocation and since we started baptism today we're going to do baptism 102 next week with our guest pastor Miriam Nicholson. Also Sunday School and Adult Forum will be starting on September 12th that is God's Work Our Hands Sunday. So what we would like to do is have an intergenerational event. We will be putting together gallons of love bags and making some posters and, and sharing some good news with our community that way. There will be no Bible studies this coming up Thursday, August 19th. And thank you again for everyone who has made donations of school supplies and canned goods for our community. It's always such a, a blessing to see how generous people can be. So thank you so much for that. The blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. The sending song is Great is Thy Faithfulness, sung by Donna Tatro. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever 
Before the dismissal, I just want to remind you, stay with us because Matthew Olmsted will be playing Handel's The Harmonious Blacksmith. Also, just a quick reminder, when we do return to worship in the building next week, we, you will be needing a mask. Baltimore City has a new ordinance that they've reinstated the masking because of the very high rates of this COVID variant. So just be aware of that. And now our dismissal. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.